Call the meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Barnett. Mr. Buhat. Here. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mr. McKenzie. Here. Mr. Eisenhart. Here. Four present, one absent. Mr. Barnett is working out of town, so his absence will be excused. Um, formal adoption of the agenda. I need a motion, please. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Buhat. Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Eisenhart? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, minutes of the regular meeting, dated April 27, 2020. Uh, need a motion to approve? Yes. Second. Roll call. Mr. Buhet? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Eisenhart? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, reports to the board, John. If you want to go first. Right. Reported the last meeting. Yeah, that yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Okay. Mr. Lowe? Yeah, I have a few things, and like John said, it's somewhat limited since we did meet two weeks ago since we uh, pushed that meeting back. Um, one thing is, I would like to once again thank everyone. Uh, you know, a number of people are jumping in and uh, doing a variety of things that aren't, aren't necessarily their exact items from custodians helping with lunches, the bus drivers jumping in and distributing lunches and, you know, the variety of people that are taking on some roles. So we appreciate all those folks that are doing those things. And I know our teachers in many cases, I know it's a lot more uh, labor intensive to do the remote learning than uh, what we even do here at school on a daily basis. To try to keep kids engaged and make contact so i appreciate all the work that our educators are doing uh, we did do some teacher appreciation activities last week uh, we created a we had emily miller actually led a teacher appreciation video that we put out on social media we also uh, made sure our teachers knew we uh, put something small together and uh, sent it to their homes uh, a, a note of thanks with a, a little message so that uh, they also knew we were thinking of them we also recognized our uh, school nurses last week, along with our bus drivers. All those things were uh, things to be recognized last week. We're beginning to explore the best way to collect and distribute materials. Um, probably gonna do that the week of Memorial Day, which would be the last week of school, and then the first week like school would uh, possibly be out. Um, we gotta get iPads back from uh, students. Uh, books. We also have student belongings. We went through lockers and items of personal that have personal value to kids. Our um, paraprofessionals and our bus drivers put those in bags and labeled them. We'll have them uh, probably an alphabetized uh, distribution, much like we do uh, did food here originally. Uh, May 29th is our actual um, student last day. Um, this Friday, the 15th, is actually our seniors uh, last day. Um, we did have our food distribution today. We did 6,980 meals. Uh, thanks to Ruth and her cafeteria staff for all their hard work in that. We've begun to start to clean up. Uh, we had our staff come in and clean up their areas and we've begun to get a little bit of a jump start on summer cleaning. Uh, in some of our areas, we also had our gym floors done last Monday. We moved that up from late June so that if we were allowed back in the gymnasiums that's already out of the way they came in and knocked out the gyms um, uh, ohsa has extended the no contact through may 31st for coaches and also currently with the department of health recommendation they're saying no, no one's allowed to use any sort of school facilities through june 30th they're saying that could be updated uh, pending on how those orders would change from the department of health couple student things. We had three students recognized for heads above the rest. Unfortunately, we were not able to have that um, breakfast lump, breakfast that they have at the golf club in Salem. It's always very nice. We had three students that earned a 31 plus on their ACT. That would be Sadie Potts, Jackie Chen, and Riley Britt. 
And each year, um, every county in the state of Ohio, there is one honoree for the Franklin B. Walter Schol Scholarship. This is the 30th year Franklin Walter was the state superintendent of education from 1977 until 1991. And he dedicated his life to the improvement of education. I'm proud to say that Riley Britt was Columbiana County winner. Uh, so that's quite an accomplishment. Also, Jensen Britt uh, advanced uh, YSU recently to the state science fair. They've been holding that virtually now. So she did advance with her uh, science fair project from here, her STEM project to the state science fair. fair. Mr. Andres was not, uh, recognized also through Heads Above the Rest as a star educator by a graduate last year, Vince Hopple, the person who was a uh, Heads Above the Rest nominee the year before, always recognized as a teacher. He recognized Mr. Andres, which is much deserved. He's very passionate about what he does. We had a virtual National Honor Society last week. It is on our YouTube channel. If you did not see it, appreciate Mrs. Farmer, Mr. Ricardo's work on that. Um, our students gave speeches. Their families were with them at the ceremony. Uh, we ran that through Zoom and uh, held that on there. We have some other virtual recognitions coming up. There'll be more um, like more videos that are being put together and we'll have students speaking and such and they will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as well. Um, Summa Decum is tomorrow at 7 p.m. We'll have that up. Scholarship night is Wednesday, May the 20th for our seniors and senior awards and their cords will be on Thursday, May the 21st at 7 p.m. Um, also, uh, the uh, Pusateries are planning to begin excavating. They're gonna come over tomorrow with Mr. Carmi, and do a site visit and prepare their GPS and that type of thing so they can get started on that field in the near future. And quickly, I would like to mention, I know it's very far out there, but we are beginning to explore what next school year could look like. So um, it could be like it was before we went out, I guess, if there was some kind of therapeutic treatment and we might have a return to normal. It could be what it is right now and everybody be remote learning. And I believe more than likely it would be something in between and be something blended. Uh, you were hearing a couple of different things. We're hearing maybe an example would be kids letters A through L come Monday and Tuesday, you shut down the school Wednesday, you disinfect the whole entire building, your buses, everything in your district, and then M through Z come on Thursday and Friday. Um, one of the challenges I see with that is um, families and child care because your kid would still be home three days a week. Um, one of the other things being tossed about is all the kids K through five or all the kids K through six would come to the school daily and the other kids would learn remotely. They're, the, they're a little more equipped to learn remote and you would then, we have one building, but if you had multiple buildings, you could then spread your kids out across your district so you could have a little bit more of items of distancing and some of the things that they're going to ask of you possibly. Challenge with something like that is that it probably would take more staff in some form because if I'm going to break up a class of 25 kids, then I'm going to need a couple of adults to do so. And we know that um, just for the months of May and June, we just saw $327,000 budget cut, which we were actually hate to say fortunate, but that most of ours is offset by the CARES Act. So really it doesn't make a huge impact financially in the current moment. However, leading in the next year, we're hearing that that cut would be at least that and likely more. Um, hopefully some of that may be offset by some of the rainy day fund, but we're kind of being prepared to prepare, clear up to 10%, which would be, you know, middle $900,000 for us of a cut. And, um, so we are looking at different avenues to support that because we have worked hard and I think been fiscally responsible here to get us in a fairly decent position as a district. Um, and we got to continue to maintain and do that moving ahead. So those are kind of where we're at on things. Um, graduation will begin Thursday for the virtual graduation. We are doing that on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We have appointments scheduled from 10 till 6. Uh, right now, we have, I believe, roughly like 23 graduates that have not scheduled an appointment. They would be coming through here. Um, we have a uh, dry run through tomorrow with Magic Moments and with Nate um, and Debbie and Mrs. Hendricks and Mr. Gleesey. 
make sure that we have things running in the manner. Jeff, Mr. Crox will help us mark everything out. We have people spaced 12 foot apart. We'll uh, run them through. We will have a number of questions we ask at the door to maintain safety. There will only be one family at a time in the auditorium uh, so that we can best meet the 10 person requirement in the auditorium as well. So uh, we will have pictures and we will have a video to put out on uh, Friday, May the 22nd that will um, have all of the students in it and uh, I believe several different angles and I feel like that they're uh, hopefully have most of the pieces we're used to at graduation. We are, um, are we have a scheduled guest speaker. It will be alumnus Rustin Davis. He's still going to speak and will be a part of that virtually as well. So that's kind of where we're at on those items. With the uncertainty of next year's school, is there a, a date that we need to look for as far as we get to a point where we're going to have to make some decisions? I mean, the whole state's probably going to go together for whatever the directions went as, as a school district. Is there a date where we're going to have to decide what we're going to do? Or well, we have weekly in? we have weekly superintendent meetings on Tuesday. Um, last week, um, Wes Fins, our county health commissioner, was a part of that. He um, kind of echoed that you know don't rush into anything quite yet. I know one of his messages was as the state opens up probably by the end of the month, we're going to have a real good idea on how things are playing out for the health crisis. We know there's other crises involved, but the health one itself, he plans to rejoin us early June uh, to kind of talk about some of the, his suggestions and us make team decisions as county schools of what probably works best. So probably have more then. And we also have begun to explore certain things such as um, plexiglass maybe in certain areas, um, hand sanitizer stations possibly in some areas because uh, lead time on a lot of that stuff isn't going to be quick. So exploring that. We have begun, we have explored uh, a, a calendar that would start after Labor Day. We don't plan to move ahead with something like that unless we were guided by like the governor's office or by Wes that that was needed that only going to gain us a couple weeks, but some Columbus schools that would probably gain them a month. So just to be prepared if something like that happened, we have uh, started to explore those types of options. Thank you. Old business resolution. Look. Electronic Technology Superintendent Lowe recommends the board approve the second reading following the old policies exhibit A. We down to there. We had a last meeting. I need a motion, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Behite? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Eisner? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, new business, non-renewal of substitutes. Superintendent Lowe recommends the board approve the non-renewal of all substitutes approved on an as-needed basis or extended time 2020-2021 school year as of June 30th, 2020, and to advise substitutes interested in being considered for the 2020-2021 school year to place such in writing to the superintendent prior to the start of next year. Uh, BLHS class of 2020, Superintendent Lowe, and Principal Ricardo recommends the board approve the list of prospective graduates for the BLA HS class of 2020 as submitted to B. Um, Nutrition Inc. Superintendent Lowe recommends the board approve the agreement with Nutrition Inc. for the 2020-2021 school year. C. <coughs> the old policy. Superintendent Lowe recommends the board approve the first reading of the following the old policy to D. The students at risk or of not qualifying for high school diploma. MCESC e-learning, Superintendent Lowe recommends the board approve the agreement with MCESC for e-learning for students for the 2020-2021 school year, Exhibit G. And I need a motion, please. So move. Uh, second. The last one, Mr. Lowe, the uh, e-learning, that was that's for Mahoney County. Yeah, we use that for credit recovery for kids that uh, have a failure in a course and they can get credit recovery through that so they don't fall behind. We also use it for uh, students that we need to offer online school. It could even play a more vital role as we talk about possibly next school year because I 
I think we, uh, in looking at finances too, uh, we are going to need to be cautious with families that maybe uh, feel differently about the reopening of schools and provide other opportunities. So that might be an avenue that we could provide some families in some cases where they could do that through that. So also um, uh, the students at risk, the reason that policy was not included the last time, that's a new one and it's being required by the state. So we needed to go through it with our guidance folks uh, to get exactly what we need to have in place for kids that are at risk so that we can have a proper plan for them moving ahead. And then uh, lastly, there are 159 uh, graduates in the class of 2020. Um, so that is one of our larger classes. Any more discussion? Roll call. Mr. Buhite? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Eisner? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, personal matters, retirement. So the town bill recommends the board approve the retirement of Sandy States, effective May 31st, 2020. Fiscal matters, consideration of financial reports. Treasurer Williams recommends the board approve the April 2020 financial reports, Exhibit E. Five-year forecast, Superintendent Bell recommends the board approve the five-year forecast fiscal year 2020 as submitted in Exhibit F. And I need a motion. Do you mind if I just present this real quick to you guys about the forecast? Okay. <laughs> Sorry for slowing you up. Um, I just put together a presentation because obviously some of you are new coming back on the board. I just wanted to go through our district's five-year forecast. Um, there's a very detailed document, but the main important item is the 7.02 on the actual five-year forecast, and it's just showing you know, where our district is as far as cash balance. So before the state cut, we were actually set to have our first two million dollar final fiscal year close um but that's that's okay because we um we're gonna still finish with 1.7 but the goal on this slide where you can see is the orange line is actually where the state auditors um want our school to be at so if you look at the orange line that's 30 cash days um of reserves to be able to you know float your payroll or of course survive during things like this where they just take your hundred thousand dollars for you and give you no time to say you were you know playing for it so um if you see where we're at for fiscal year um 20 um you can see we're above the orange line so we're doing well so um what i've budgeted in the forecast is i've actually already put in our plan for 10 percent cut for next year we hope you know definitely that is not in that is not going to happen but you know ultimately what this is showing you cash wise is that you know our district is positioned well to you know weather this storm a little bit and you know make you know take our time making our decisions on you know and let the state figure out you know let's see what is going to go on with income taxes and collections and you know various things so this is just our cash balance can you go to the next one? Um, the next one is just in general how our district is funded. So if you see the giant red portion, our district is 50% funded from the state. It's actually a little bit more, 54%. It's just sort of an estimated um, areas. So ultimately, when the state does make cuts, that's why it affects us so strongly because that's 50%, 54% of our total revenue. Um, Ultimately, what we could not, you know, survive, you know, without the state's portion. Um, the other major part is real estate taxes. So, being real estate is the second largest portion of how our district is funded, it's going to be very important that, you know, tax collections, real estate people are paying the real estate taxes to help support the school. So, if for some reason they become delinquent, you know, that's all going to affect our district cash flow, at least in the short term. And then another area of revenue, the other state, um, that includes you know, various taxes, but one is the casino tax um, that our school does get money from. And be, being that the casinos have been closed for multiple months now, you know, they obviously anticipate that being significantly lower. Um, and then the next slide, it just really shows you, you know, the local versus state funding and 
you know, um, just where where our district is, um, and that you know currently we're still projecting to to be heavily relying on the state, um, but. Um, and also outside of these, you know, these cuts, what I, one important thing to remember is that our district is still a guaranteed district for funding. So though we haven't technically lost outside of this cut right now, um, we still have not seen a, an increase in revenue from the state to our general fund in over four years. So that's that's really important thing to keep in mind. You know, when the cost of everything else is rising, you know, we had to consistently, you know, be in a position to, you know, right size, can you know, always, you know, look for efficiencies. Uh, fortunately, with this building, we've been able to really, you know, share services across elementary, middle school, high school, you know, various ways to get creative to live within our means. So. This just kind of shows you, you know, our funding has been very flat. Um, this is just sort of a summary where it just says state funding is reduced due to COVID in fiscal year 20. Now the good news for Beaver Local is that it is completely, that this year's loss is completely offset by the CARES Act, which is a federal fund. However, the only, you know, the major concern is that next year, you know, we, we do not know anything about, you know, any future CARES Act. Um, and the, the big, you know, unknown is that could we receive a 10%, you know, cut from the state and that 10% cut would be $943,000, which would be substantial. Um, then the last part is just an overview for, you know, just FYI of how we spend our money at the district. The, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that wages and benefits and a good part of that services is all on people. Um, obviously, our greatest asset in the school district is our people. Um, the services, just so you know, that usually includes, you know, uh, parapros, um, therapists, things that we purchase from the ESC, interpreters, school nurse, those sorts of things where you know, basically we gain you know, efficiency by buying it there instead of having it in-house because we're sharing services or they can perform it cheaper than we can in-house. That's about it. If I could say one thing before you, I wanna, and we mentioned Mrs. States and Stacy just mentioned about people. Um, you know, I've, I've been here 20 years. I know Mrs. States was at West Point when I've been here, I've worked alongside her. That whole entire time, um, you know, somebody very passionate about what she does with music. You know, there's many parents probably maybe not don't have that same feeling when she's doing her recorders and recorder karate and uh, doing that. But kids love that, and it's also kids. Many times in our district, their first exposure to some sort of an instrument kickstarts them into uh, the band program or whatever it may be. She also always does a Veterans Day program that clear back to West Point days that many folks have always enjoyed and. Uh, you know, her different holiday programs. I can remember her doing, you know, 9-11 uh, after we had that tragedy and uh, out on the front lawn at West Point putting on a big program celebrating the community. So uh, she's also kind of the head of our LPDC with our teaching staff. So she definitely does a lot around here and uh, wish her all the best in her retirement. But I wanted to make sure I mentioned uh, we appreciate all her efforts. She will be missed and we wish her the best in retirement. So if I can get a motion, please. So moved. Second. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call. Mr. Buhet? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Adenhart? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, President, board comments. Uh, please appreciate all the patience everybody has shown, uh, parents, kids. Uh, it's just been a rough year with kids this last part. Um, as uh, your admin team and your staff is doing all they can to make it a better year, finish out. Appreciate the volunteers and all those uh, people that are working doing the lenders. I think that's very important. Um, just continue on and we'll uh, do our best to make sure it's a memorable year. And with that, uh, I need a motion to enter into executive session. I think we're good on that. Oh, we are? Okay. Very good. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Okay. 
We just need a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Buhek? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Eisenhower? Yes. Motion passed. And we are adjourned. 726. Thank you very much. Thanks. My question on the funding.